dead. For he was spiritually dead, and his society had recognized him as societally that he was dead. I think the other thing that's interesting is this, is that he had lost total control of his life. He had lost control. That he no longer controlled his life, but he was controlled by demonic spirits. That there was a demonic um, possession, and he no longer had control of his life. That as a matter of fact, he had lost so much control that people were trying to shackle him, that they were, they were trying to um, contain him. In our society, you see a lot of people that lose control of their life. And a lot of times they, they, they revert to drugs. They revert to, parents revert to putting their kids in boot camps when you lose control of your kids. Rehab centers. All of a sudden, in Hollywood, rehab centers are a big deal. It's actually vogue to get into a rehab center. And have you seen some of these rehab centers? Like, I'm addicted to nothing, but I want to go. I, I mean, some of those are really nice. You're looking like, wow, really? Now on, society, on TV, the big thing is family interventions. There's even a show called Intervention, where they show families and they show friends who take people who their lives are so far out of control that they take them and they have an intervention and then they film it for TV. And then there's Oprah Winfrey. She can solve the world's problems, anything. Give cars. Makes people happy. But the main characteristic that a person experiences is that no matter how bad a person wants to stop their destructive behavior, they just can't seem to get control over it. This is the main, this is the main thing, that when you look at demonic possession, or even if you look at demonic oppression, that there's an area of your life that becomes so lost that you try and gain control over it, and you can't. You can't. You can't. That, that, that it's not just a lack of willpower. Because if it was a lack of willpower, if it was just self-will, you could self-will your way back into it. Because in those areas that I know a lot of people, and I counsel with a lot of people, that, man, if, if it was self-will, they would be done with the struggle. Because they hate what they're going through. When you actually feel destructive forces outside of you, outside of your control, this is a sign of demonic oppression. This is a sign of demonic possession. That when you actually feel like there is a driving force in your life that is outside of you, that that's one way to recognize demonic activity. If you flip down to Mark 5, 6 through 13, it says this, but before, before I get to that, here's what's important to recognize. Demonic oppression is real. Demonic activity is real. But Christ has authority over demonic spirits. Amen? And you see, I think this is important to talk about in Christianity because as Americans, like I've said before, this is not an area that we really talk about. But this should be an area that we talk a lot about. Because what happens in areas that we lose control in, those are the exact areas that we don't want to talk about. Right? Because in our society, there's this, this thing that causes us to, to put on a really shiny face, just, just to put on this, this false armor. And that, that in these areas as Christians, what we can come to is say, oh, you struggle in this area. Well, brother, th this is the area that I need to walk with you in. Because Christ has already gained control over this area. The Bible says we're two or more gathered together that Christ is there. That even tonight, at the end of the service, we're going to pray. We're, we're, we're going to give an invitation of just, just of what God's doing in your life. If you feel like there's an area in your life where you just say, you know what, God, I, I want this to be done with this. It, or maybe it's a family member that you want to pray for. We're two or more gathered together, then Christ's presence is there. 
And when Christ's presence shows up, his presence has the power and authority over anything that we're going through, right? Verse 6, when Jesus, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and he fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me? Jesus, the son of the most high God, swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus said to him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. And then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out, and he went into the pigs. The herd was about 2,000 in number, and Jesus, the number. And they rushed down the steep bank and into the lake, and they were drowned. You see, when you understand history, the history of these demons... What happens is is you can begin to appreciate why the demons gave credence to Jesus. This man who had never encountered Christ before ran and fell down at his feet and proclaimed who Christ was. Why? Because the demons knew Jesus. Because Jesus is God. And God created everything. And if you know anything about Scripture, what you understand is this, is that demons are angels in a fallen nature. So so these angels once exalted God in heaven. These angels, these demons, knew and had been in the presence of God Almighty, had been in the presence of Christ. Do you know what the difference is between Humans and angels or these demons. It's not free will. We want to say it's free will. We want it's not free will, and the and the reason that it's not free will is this: is because these demons had been in the presence of God and had rejected Him. So they obviously had free will, right? You and I have free will. The difference is is this is that they rejected God in his presence. And we cry out to him without ever being in his presence. And this is why God allows us grace. This is why there's forgiveness. For for our eyes have not seen. We have not bowed yet in his presence. Revelations 12, 7 through 9 says, And there was a war in heaven. This is how these angels, this is how these demons knew Jesus. Revelation 12 says, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Who was the dragon? Satan. Satan. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So these demons knew Jesus because these demons had actually been in heaven. James 2.19 says this. It says that you believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that. And they shudder. So, so Jesus comes up to this area that he had not been in. This man filled with a legion of demons comes up and falls prostrate before him and proclaims that he is Christ, God incarnate. He says, and you believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that. And they shudder because they know what is at the end of their judgment. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says this. Just make notes. I'm going to give you a couple more. 
Therefore God exalted to the highest place and gave his name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee would bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. These demons were acknowledging just exactly what Philippians says. They were acknowledging Christ. You see, here's what's interesting. Because you ever have the same struggle that you, you continue to struggle with, and, and you're like, man, God, why do I continue to struggle in that area? What, what is this oppression about? You see, the Bible says that demons have territories. That there's territories that, that demonic activity takes place in. These demons did not want to be cast out of this region. That was their territory. I have no idea why Christ allowed them to stay in that region. I think that's really, really interesting. But even another piece to that is this. That while Christ, didn't, um, while Christ did not cast them out of that region, you know what Christ is really concerned about? Is our relationship is where's your relationship at with him? Because if your relationship was right with him, then these demonic spirits don't matter anyway. But the, 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 these demonic spirits have no authority where Christ dwells. Yeah. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12 says this. It says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You see, one thing that's apparent about this man is this. He did not have a relationship with God. He did not put on the full armor of, of Christ so that he could take his stand against the uh, devil's schemes. And where God's presence isn't, Satan's presence will always show up. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And where Jesus' spirit shows up, where Christ shows up, his authority is always revealed. And a large herd of pigs, Mark 5, 11 through 13, and a large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. I bet they were surprised. <laughs> that would have been an interesting picture, right? There's certain times in the Bible where you're like, okay, it wouldn't be interesting to be able to go back and say, okay, we need to get up to the top of this hill because watch this. Like these pigs are just hanging out eating. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. And the demons begged Jesus, send us amongst the pigs. That is where they belong. Allow us to go into them. And he gave them permission. And the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. You see, this is a sign. The demonic spirits have a need to dwell in something. Like if they can't dwell in, in, in a person, then they're going to dwell in pigs. I'm betting there's some post office guys that say, man, they dwell in dogs. I'm just telling you, they dwell in dogs. <laughs> the herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank and to the lake, and they were drowned. Here's the lesson for us. The same freedom... Is for us. The same freedom that allowed God's authority to be released in this man's life is for us. This is not a story about a man who is filled with demons. This is a story about God's authority, the God's presence. Where Christ is, Satan cannot be. Where, where Christ's presence comes, Satan has to flee. This is what this story is about. A lot of times, uh, people want to concentrate on, on the demonic side of this story. This story is about God revealing himself and coming to places that, that, he, that, that this man had not known. And that God comes to take back the areas that the enemy tries to steal. Freedom comes to us when we allow God to take authority in our lives. That's when freedom comes. That, that's... Paul, that's amazing. Amen. Amen. You see, here's the, difficult for it, the difficulty for us. The difficulty for us is this. As Americans, we have this need to let everybody think that everything's okay in our life. 
that we, that we don't want to let down the shield, that, that we want to keep everything close. We want to think that we can tackle this stuff on our own. How many of you have places in your life, you don't have to raise your hands, but you have areas in your life that you've been trying to tackle for years? It's, and if I, if, I just, if I just work hard enough, I, I can do this thing. And, and, and we have small groups galore around here. John Jessup spoke on small groups last week. And yet there are people who have been in small groups for years who have not revealed to their small group what's going on in their life. Where two or more are gathered together, Christ is there. The impact of Jesus' authority is freedom. Verses 14 through 17. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been, up, who had been possessed. I love this. They saw the man who had been possessed by a legion of demons. He was sitting there dressed and in his right mind. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful that this man who had, who had been isolated, he had been on the outskirts of town, he was living amongst the dead, had been brought back to life, and it was the Spirit of God, it was the authority of Christ that came into his life that brought a healing for his life. This is God. He was sitting there dressed and in his right mind. Don't you know that there's going to be a day when we all stand before God and no matter what's going on in your life, all is going to be made right? Right? And as Christians, we long for that day. But here's what's interesting. We long for that day and many times we think, oh, I can't wait to get to heaven. You don't have to wait to get to heaven. Christ came incarnate on this earth. And where his presence is, Satan's presence has to flee. And they were afraid. And those who had, who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave the region. I was 13 when I first recognized Christ. I was, I was at a camp, and that's not where I gave my life to Christ, but that was where I recognized him. And, and there was a situation that had happened and a friend of mine, me and my friend had done some things, some illegal activity at camp because we were 13. And that's not what all kids do, but that's what me and my friends did. And we're sitting in a service, and my friend is feeling really guilty because his conscience was weaker than mine. <laughs> and he looks up and he goes, Paul, I'm going forward. I'm going forward, and I'm going to repent. I'm going to ask for forgiveness. He goes, you coming? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, that's a stupid idea. And he goes forward, and the power of God came on him so powerfully. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody slain in the spirit. But that's what happened to him. And I've been in a lot of services where I've watched it happen, and sometimes it's real and sometimes it's not. All right? Just grant you that. We, we live it.